Hello everyone, welcome back. It is the 3rd of September and I am here today just to share with you my stitching call from my AB Singo and Bingo gang and show you what I was able to accomplish. Today's call was the letter V and V for me was village as in autumn in the village. So here is the autumn in the village and I started on the middle house and I worked today you had to do a hundred stitches and I did a hundred and thirty four and this is where I got to I worked on the door so I was able to finish all of the door except one color in the bottom and these are, I think, stained glass windows because the pattern, even though I've enlarged it, <laughs> it's really hard to see. It's got two or three different colors in there and they're quarter stitches. Yeah, not half stitches. They're all quarter stitches. So they change all around inside that little square. Heaven help me. I'm doing this on 36 count and I gotta do quarter stitches. Oh well, <laughs> we shall see how that turns out. Um, but I'm excited that I got that done and um, met that prompt, so that was really nice. I did not use this piece for any of my other acrostics or my Daily 30 group or anything, so um, that was all I needed to do. So now I'm gonna reward myself and go play in my stash. <laughs> I am getting ready to uh, begin looking through all of my patterns and kits and things of that nature, things I've accumulated over the year, gifts, purchases, and I will be pulling out, I probably just my first pass at it, um, anything I wanna stitch next year, I wanna go ahead and pull it all out. It'll be more than I can stitch, but at least it'll help me be the first step in identifying what I'm gonna put on my whip go board for next year and what else I might be working on. I have a, a friend, um, Dee Abrams, who has suggested in a Zoom meeting the other night that um, she is going to do one Christmas ornament a month in the year 2024. And she's asked if any of us would like to join her that doesn't fit with my whip down <laughs> philosophy right now. However, I've done really well. I've gotten down to 21 whips and I have hopes of finishing three this month. Um, yes, I have a new start for whip go. So that would be a net reduction of two. But if that happens, um, I would actually be down to 19. I would be under 20 which would be awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna look while I'm looking through my stash and I'm gonna see if there are that many ornaments that I really want to do. And it has to be that I really want to do them, not just so I can participate in this event. Um, I'm not being pressured or anything like that. But I haven't done an ornament theme since I think Mania in 2017 or something like that. I did seven ornaments in that month for my mania that year and I really haven't done a focus on ornaments since so that sounded kind of interesting I'm gonna look at it no commitment yet <laughs> just gonna look at it <laughs> I do also have um, a decision already made of what my birthday starts gonna be this year my friend glow and I have the same pattern we ordered it together and it's um, Felice naughty dog <laughs> It's, it is a Christmas ornament, um, so it would fit if I decided to do that. But um, we're gonna start that on my birthday in December. So um, so this year, for my birthday start, I'm gonna ask everybody that wants to, to start an ornament of some kind for any holiday they want, but that's what I'm gonna do this year. So if you're thinking about doing that um, and would like to do it on my birthday, that would be awesome. I'd love it. So. 
that is what I've been working on today. Those are my plans for the rest of the afternoon. And uh, otherwise, happy stitching. Talk to you soon. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. It is later on September the 3rd, and I am here to share some exciting news with you. I have been stitching diligently on one of my pieces, wanting to finish it this month when it gets called. And today, I had a great stitching day, and I just decided to go ahead and stitch on it as long as I wanted. And if I finished it before it got called, I would just substitute something else because I wanted to finish this. And it is my autumn bell pull. And I finished it tonight. I'm so excited to share it with you and I will have to share it with you slowly as it scrolls up because it's so big. This is on 32 count Lugana. It's Queen Anne's lace fabric, um, but it's a big, Piece. And here we go. I'm gonna see about turning that light so it's not quite so bright. Here's the A. And there's the first U where I used brighter colors as, as the leaves were just turning. And there's the T with all the beautiful vegetables in there. Here's the second U, where I made the leaves a lot browner, as if it's later in the fall. There's the beautiful M with the big pumpkin and the sunflowers. And the final N, and I love it, I didn't do this myself, the pattern was charted with those colors, but I love the fact that they used a lot of the paler colors um, for the veining and everything, because that makes those leaves look crunchy, you know, like they're, they've been laying on the ground and they're all crunchy. So there's my autumn bell pull. There's a beautiful poem in here. I'll read it to you. It says, always around God's love to be found under the brilliant autumn sky. Prayers of thanksgiving are lifted high. Unceasing grace enfolds us all. His mercies unchanging, winter, spring, summer, or fall. Nature's harvest of gold encircles the earth, the embrace of God for mankind to behold. It's just beautiful. I love the colors. Now I'm gonna stand up and move back try not to trip over my chair here but I'm gonna yeah I know you can't see the details but I want you to see how long this is there you go that's how long it is so that's gonna look really nice hanging on the wall it'll be large enough that you will be able to see it so I'm glad for that so the last letter that you haven't seen really before was this one that I finished today. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I'll give you some stats on it. <laughs> I started it September the 16th, 2020. I finished it September the 3rd, 2023. Almost on its third year birthday. <laughs> I'm glad I got it there before then, but now I'm gonna give it a really good press. And even though you can see on a roller frame, it's not that bad. It's been rolled up for two years, two years, and it's not horrible. That should press out pretty well. So I'm gonna press it tomorrow, pick the fabric. Now I've got to go find a good topper as well for it and um, then I can finish it up. Thanks for letting me share that with you. I'm so excited. Uh, I, I really am tickled to death to have it done. I'm gonna try to fully finish it as quickly as I can if I can find a topper. 
because I want it displayed. I just put up all my fall decor and this would just be beautiful hanging and I know exactly where I'll put it. So I'll see what I can do and if I get it fully fished anytime in the very near future, <laughs> maybe I could include it with this video. Wouldn't that be fun? I hope you've had a good day of stitching. I certainly have. Had a wonderful day. Um, sold a few tickets to the Emporium this morning. Just a few. Uh, had a great lunch with my son. Leftovers for supper. He had to head on home this evening. He's got to cut grass and get his house all ready and, and cleaned um, while he has this long weekend. But it was so good to have time with him. So I had a great day. Well, I'm gonna put this away. I'll iron it tomorrow. Coco and I are gonna turn in. It's about 10.30, so she's over there. <laughs> she's already napping, she's already asleep. But I'll, I'll get her up and take her to bed with me in a minute. So, happy stitching everybody. And happy finishes. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. It's Dina, and it is September the 5th, and I'm here to talk to you about my stitching so far today. I um, wanted to go ahead and, and share this with you so I don't forget everything that I need to tell you about it, but as you know, I'm participating in the Magazine Monthly Challenge Group's event called ABCingo, and yesterday the letter E was called and I stitched on my welcoming Christmas because the designer was Sandy Gore Evans and that's where the E came in. And I continued stitching on that after I posted it until I finished it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that brought something up. On my AB Singo board, I have listed welcoming Christmas multiple times. I have also listed Autumn Bell Pull multiple times because when I did my board up, I was hoping to finish both of those this month and I thought it would take all of those times to get it done. And instead, what happened is I had been making progress on it and I just kept stitching on it until it was completed. So that means I need to substitute something else in all those extra spaces. So I did. So let me tell you about that. I had to substitute for the letter G because I had used it for Sandy Gore Evans uh, in Welcoming Christmas. So I needed a G and so I decided to substitute Small Gift. That's the one with the little girl on the navy blue fabric holding the tiny present. And she's on here another time as well, but I went ahead and put her on here for the G. The next letter that I had to, well, two more letters I had to sub out were A and B. I had Autumn Bell Pull for the A and the B for Autumn and Bell. And since I finished it already, I had to come up with another A and another B. So my A is now A Sampler for All Seasons and my B is By the Bay, 13th Colony. So I got those swapped out. And then, this one was kind of sad. <laughs> um, I have to do another U for under each other for welcoming Christmas. So <laughs> I decided to keep the U for under each other, but change out the whip to Royal Games one because the two queens appear to be underneath each other, depending on which one you're looking at. And then X. I had used Xanthic colors. I looked it up. It's X-A-N-T-H-I-C. That means yellow in color. And I was using that for my autumn bell pool because I had yellow and orangey leaves and yellow, um, yellowish pumpkins and that sort of thing. And now that that one's completed, I thought, what do I have with yellow in it? And I have Hawk Run hollow and I have yellow flowers even in the block that I'm working on. So I've substituted Hawk Run Hollow for the xanthic colors because of the yellow that I have in there. So I think that's all the substitutions I have to do. But that's what happens 
when you put the same whip down multiple times and then you finish it. <laughs> you have to go and recreate your board. And I wanted to announce it here now. I'm going to post it in the group as well to show that I have an updated board because I've had two finishes. Um, and I'll mention what I'm going to change in there as well. So today's, um, today's letter was D, and I, for me, that was Stitcher's Days of Christmas. This is by Sue Hillis. It's a really pretty bell pull looking thing. I'm into bell pulls uh, this year for some reason. I just finished the autumn bell pull, and now I'm working on this one even more. This has been one I've, I've been doing slowly, kind of in the background a little bit at a time, but it's it's quite lovely. I'm going to take this Q-snap bar off, just the one of them, so that you can see. <laughs> okay. So today, I was starting the next rows under where I left off, which was with the fabrics. Ten cuts of linen. So now I have nine bags of buttons, and eight silver thimbles, and the pictures are right underneath each of those, but uh, all I had to do was those two bands, and I had enough stitches, and that is straight stitching, back stitching, rather, uh, but I counted two for one. Two of my stitches made one cross stitch, and uh, still, that was 136 um, stitches in it, so that is enough for the uh, goal for today and I am going to put it up. I'm going to get out something else I want to work on uh, to stitch on just for fun. I have a Zoom call today with a friend um, who I will be stitching with and so I need something quite easy to work on um, and not something I have to count a lot and so I don't want to I don't want to be working on this one. I want to be doing something that I could fill in, do maybe some fill in work on. So that's what I'm going to do. Put this away. So, it's going great. I am having a great, great month of stitching so far. Two big finishes. Um, the Autumn Bell Pull, I'm, I think I announced when I talked about it that it was two years in the making. And when I went back and looked at the, the card, um, started it in 2020. That's three years now, guys. Three. So I was only averaging two letters a year. To, it was taking me about six months each um, in the beginning, you know, because I was only working on it for prompts. And so it just kind of moseyed along. <laughs> but I am happy with it, and I'm, I'm really tickled. I'm hoping to go shopping for fabric. I have already ordered the topper for it, the hanger. Um, and so then I'll be able to fully finish it, hopefully, as I said before, for the season. We'll see. Well, I'll let you get back to what you were doing. I'm going to see what I'm going to stitch on while I'm talking to my friend. And then I hope to be able to come back and share some more stitching with you today. Hi, everyone. It's a little bit later on September the 5th, and I'm here to give you my final update for today. I was able to work on another prompt today. I was able to work on... Um, long dog sampler pandemic I'm using the P for on the spot the P in my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic and so I pulled out pandemic it's the first time I've worked on it since I made my decision on what I was going to do with it and I thoroughly enjoyed it today I really did I also gave myself permission to not use the lightest lightest color of blue because I don't have to worry about having enough floss anymore. I can fussy cut it, and I can take out that really, really, really pale blue so that it doesn't bother me anymore. So I'll leave a little bit of the light blue in for now. I'll show you where that is uh, so it's not a stark difference. But then by the time I get down to the page break, I'm hoping that uh, the little bit I do at the bottom, I won't use the light blue. So here's where I work today. I was over in this area right here. I attached to this little leaf, I actually stitched that leaf. I attached right here on that stem and I stitched all the way over here. This is a flower hanging down here and there's another flower 
go on up here with its leaves. It filled in that corner completely. And so I'm excited about that. Now the next time I work on it, I'll come on down here and try to finish this page. So once I finish the page, where does that leave me? Well, you know, I've decided to make this into a pillow for my stitching room to go on my bench. So, um, I wanted it to be wide enough to make a pretty pillow. And I didn't, I didn't feel like this was quite wide enough uh, to make as a pillow. Um, thinking that I want to make it just a little bit longer. So, that means I have to do a portion of the page all the way across again. Um, so I'll show you how I figured that out. This is the cover of it. And you'll see there's a dark blue line right across here. That is where I will be stopping. And I went down in here and I tried to look at motifs and what would be a finished looking motif instead of just cutting it off. There's a there's a pale line up here that I originally thought I might do and I kind of wound my way around a couple of motifs and then I thought no if I'm gonna stitch this into a pillow it's gonna be straight across the bottom and I want to stitch the fabric right up to the stitching so I need it to be straight across. So I came down here and I decided that there were some sections in here that made sense to cut them off where they were. One of them were these little animals right here. Here's one and here's one. They kind of mirror each other and they're on the same row. So that's where I decided that I was going to work. Now in one of the, like this area over here, uh, when the line comes through, it's cutting these flowers off pretty badly. So I will probably eliminate these two flowers. And there's a butterfly right over here and I'm going to move it to that space that looks the biggest. So that's all I got to do. But what that means is when I finish the page I'm on, which is this one right here, when I finish that, then I'm gonna have to do a partial page and looking at it, it is roughly half a page all the way across again. So this will not be a finish this year. Um, there's no way I can get that done with everything else I'm working on by the end of this year. But it should be a finish hopefully next year. Um, I'm hoping that perhaps to do half a page looking at it here, I might could do that in two stitching sessions, possibly. And so there are one, two, I think it's five pages. Yep, there are five pages across, and if I have to do them in two different stitching section sessions, even if I did one a month, I could get it done in 10 months next year. So I think it's doable to finish next year, but definitely won't be finished this year. So I can take that off my back burner of what I was hoping to do once I decided to, to shorten it but I want to shorten it wisely. Um, and that'll get a fairly decent amount of it. I'll be cutting it off about right here. I'm not quite halfway, but I think it'll be beautiful and um, I'll be happy with that. So that'll be good. Well, the letter has been called in AB Singo for tomorrow and that letter is B. And now that it's a good thing I made my changes this afternoon because that originally was Autumn Bell Pull and now it's By the Bay. So tomorrow morning I'll pull out my By the Bay and I'll get busy working on it. I'm excited about that. So for tonight I have met a prompt in the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch with my pandemic because I had 242 stitches today in it and I always try to get 200 for the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch if if I'm not using it for anything else, and I wasn't. So I'm happy with that. I feel really, really good about that. Um, I feel productive today, which is great. So I will let you get back to what you were doing. I'm gonna take Coco out for her last uh, potty break, and then we will go to bed, and I can get up early in the morning and start at it again. I have one um, Zoom call tomorrow, and I'm hoping to get lots of stitching in.
So we'll see what I can get done. Happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. It is the evening of September the 7th, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my stitching. Spring at Hawk Run Hollow. It's been a little while since I've worked on it. I've been working on this block right here, block three, and um, I actually had uh, declared this as my journey piece this year with my guild, and I was gonna do these two blocks. So I'm gonna be at 50%. I think we're supposed to have them finished mid-September, if I'm not mistaken. So at least I finished one block, because tonight I did. I stitched 843 stitches today to finish this block. So here's where it is. I was using this for my um, AB Singo and the letter was X. And so I said that I was using it for the xanthic colors in it. It's S-A-N. I think it's T-H-I-C if I'm spelling it correctly. But anyway, I did double check it and it means yellow in color. And so there is yellow all in this block. And I actually got to stitch some of this yellow in all these little flowers going up the sides and in the top row here in that flower. So um, I think that was a fair use of the word. 843 stitches through the course of the day. I started on it this morning, uh, stitched. Um, I was working on this side over here. I had uh, stitched some of these smaller motifs here, got up to my 100 stitches for um, my AB Singo actually did 184 stitches before I stopped and recorded everything. And then I checked and I had declared it for my daily 30 group as well. So I stitched to 310 stitches and took a picture and posted in the daily 30 group for the prompt. So then I was through with all the prompts. And I decided I want to finish this block if I can do it. I had stitched 310 stitches at that point. So I took a break, went to lunch with a friend today. We had a wonderful afternoon, chatted for about an hour or so. I came home, I stitched. I stopped, I took my precious puppy out for a walk and uh, time to play and came back and I put my dinner in the oven to heat up and I stitched. <laughs> I had dinner, Coco had her dinner with me. Um, I came back up here and I stitched. I have stitched all day today. I haven't done any housework today. I just stitched and I finished the block. So that was my real, um, I guess my luxury day today to give myself permission to do that because I wanted to get at least that one block finished um, before my journey piece has to be reported on so I can at least say I got half of my goal. And then now, the next time that this is called, I will start over here. I'll remind you of what that block looks like. It's got a little lake on it with a ship and kites that are flying. There's gonna be a lot of stitches in there. A lot of stitches, probably even more than was over here. So there's no way I'm gonna finish this one in time. Not gonna try. <laughs> All right, so that's the stitching for today. Numbers have been called for tomorrow and my uh, number for tomorrow uh, turns out to be Cranberry Christmas um, for my whip and I'm excited about that because I would really like to stitch on it. I wanted to take it with me to my stitching meetup on Saturday because I felt like it would be easy stitching to do that. So I may not do more than my hundred stitches on it tomorrow because I may want to take it with me on Saturday. Um, and get the rest of the stitches if I want to for extras for that. If I don't take that one, I'm not sure what I will take because I have just about 
depleted myself of the small and medium projects. I do have a couple I could take. I think Halloween Quaker is still on a Q-snap and there may be one other one that I could work on. Um, a sampler for all seasons, something like that. But I'll decide on that tomorrow. <laughs> I have time today. That is all the news. I'm going to now say goodnight. Uh, I get to talk to my sister in the morning, and then I take Coco to Fred's. So, uh, and then, hopefully, I'll have dinner with my husband tomorrow night. That's an added date that I hadn't planned on, so I'm excited about it. Well, I will talk to you soon, hopefully to share more stitching with you. I'm celebrating my page, my square finish, which is a page finish, on my Hawk Run Hollow, and I'm excited about it. I hope you're having a great month of stitching, and I will talk to you again as soon as I have something to share with you. Happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. It is Friday night, September the 8th, and I'm here to share my stitching with you and to catch up on something that I missed. Well, let's catch up first, right? I mentioned in a previous little clip that I had a finish that day, that I had worked on my prompt of um, for my AB Singo for, of Welcoming Christmas, and that I worked on it until I finished it but I never showed it to you. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. So let me share it with you. Here's Welcoming Christmas. I think that is precious. I'm thinking of making it into a flat fold. I'm so excited to have that done. So there you go. Now, that I caught that up, <laughs> the prompt for today from AB Singo was to work on Cranberry Christmas. And I have completed all but one, which is this pillow right here. And the last time we talked about it, I mentioned that uh, based on a recommendation from Anna Williamson and the North Alabama Retreat, I changed my lettering to red and green, and I'm so glad I did. I think it looks remarkable. I am stitching this with Sulky, the Sulky pack that was issued with this pattern by Hands On Design. And today, I had to do um, at least 100 stitches, and I did 147 stitches in the word Christmas. And um, I mentioned that I was just probably going to stitch what I needed so I could take it with me tomorrow to our stitching meetup. And that's exactly what I did. I stopped right there and I didn't stitch anymore. So, and I do mean I haven't stitched anymore today. Um, my husband got home from his hike today. We went to dinner and it was great to see him. He's very tired. <laughs> He's driven for two days to get home. And so um, I think that, uh, you know, he's unloaded his truck. He's in there now kind of going through his hiking gear and uh, spreading out his tent to dry and make sure everything's, um, you know, ready to pack away. It may take a day or two to get all that done. And he's gotten started with it. So, um, He'll have the next few days to do anything he needs to do around the house or get his gear all straightened out uh, while Coco's at Fred's and he won't be um, worried about her being bored and or getting into something. So I think that'll be helpful. Well, that's all that has occurred today. It was quite a bit. It was a good day. I'm going to make sure I have everything packed up for my stitching day tomorrow and get it in the car. I've been asked to bring my laptop, um, lap stand rather, um, for cross stitching. Uh, someone has been gifted an older one and they want to see how it's put together. And so we're going to compare notes on that uh, tomorrow. And um, other than that, it's back to stitching. I did want to talk about one piece of business, and that is to let you know 
uh, I finally did decide to monetize my channel and it's for the exact reason uh, that Lorraine uh, Rags to Stitches USA has shared on her channel. Um, I had thought about it and had mentioned maybe doing it before and then I got into the process of doing it and I felt like it was a very difficult process. It was very arduous. It was not easy. Um, I kept being asked for more information. I was, you know, not comfortable with some of the requests. I didn't like scanning my ID and putting it in there and I just felt like some of it might or may or may not have been legit and I had to check it all out, but it took me probably two months of, of doing little bits and pieces and, um, you know, getting it taken care of. And I decided I wasn't even going to do it. And then I saw Lorraine's video and where she explained that she was pushed to do it because she was so tired of all those ads on her channel all throughout her channel and they're making money on her channel and she doesn't even want ads on her channel and I feel exactly the same way. So I bit the bullet and I have monetized and it is strictly so that I could ask them to not put ads anywhere except in the front and the back, the beginning and the end. Um, because I feel like, you know, hopefully you can skip the one in the front. <laughs> if it's not skippable, I apologize. But um, the one in the back, you can always just leave if you don't have to watch it. I'm not doing this to make money. I'm actually doing it to try to control the fact that, that they can't put ads all the way through the video. Because I, I think that's irritating uh, for people. So, um, if you monetize to, as a way of making money, then I think that's great. I'm happy for you. I let the ads play through as much as possible to help you um, because that is a way for you to get a few cents on the dollar. Um, but, you know, I, I really and truly just wanted to tell them not to put ads all the way through it. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, I haven't changed my opinion on not wanting to monetize, but I felt like that was my best way to control what was going on on my channel. So there you have it. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Um, I hope you have a great weekend uh, coming ahead of you. And um, I hope that you get lots of stitching done. And I will be back soon, uh, hopefully sharing uh, more stitching with you and um, maybe some accomplishments and uh, news and just whatever else is going on. So happy stitching, everybody. Good night. There's been something new over here because on our walk today, all of a sudden, Coco had to stop at this tree and she is smelling in up into the tree, not, not always on the ground. Now it's a little of both. There's something very interesting over here. been doing this for a couple of minutes. Finally had enough time to get out the phone and film it for you. <laughs> Comes a car. She took a break just to see who that was. There you go. More into the tree. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Wonder what was in there. Look, she's buried in the tree. <laughs> oh, she is really going over every inch of that limb. New smells. So, something new. Got to identify that. This is amazing. She never takes this long anywhere. She sniffs a little bit and then moves on. <laughs> this is why I call walking with Coco a sniffari because she does like to sniff the whole way. What you doing, baby? Look at this. She's got her arm over me. What you doing? 
What is it? I can't get her in the camera. There you go. <laughs> She's pulling on me. Here we go. Watch. Watch this. Coco, what's up, baby? What's up? What you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, huh? You want my loving? You want some? You want a little scratching? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Coco's missing her daddy. When she's missing her daddy, she's clingy. And she wants lots of attention. I'm trying to stitch. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> she's a sweet girl.